all situated how we want to be. We look move. how we want to look on camera. Got your you posture like you're about to start doing like the Irish. Like a like a little yeah. uh, tap. Like, I die, I die. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, welcome everybody to our end of season three discussion. I am your host today, Price, with Mason, Dylan, and Nathan. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about this spicy season that we have on our hands. Spicy. I mean, what else are we going to call it? I took hey. the words right out of my mouth, sure. I'm glad sure. I got that spice right out of your mouth, Mason. <laughs> are we trying to get a deal with Wingstop? What are we doing? What did you, what oh, did you do? That would be great. Ooh. I think that would be great. Actually, any kind can of deal. Eat, can, we do hot, can we just steal Hot Ones ideas? <laughs> yeah. Just do Hot Wings as we do. Yeah, let's just new season eat Hot Wings. To start soon. You know, maybe that'll be a thing we can do next season. Yeah. Hot Ones movie reviews. Wait, guys. We're not getting crazy for next uh, season as yeah, of yet. We gotta, we gotta bang through this season. So, <laughs> as as you all are probably aware, our first two seasons, it's going to be structured the same. Uh, the questions are probably going to be the same as well. Uh, that's where we got it from. The we answers just, are the same, too. Like, all <laughs> yeah, the same movies weird. from last season. I, I just pulled up the same one. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Alright, well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and for our first category, we'll go with best costume. Mm. Oh, goodness. So, best costume. Mm. What we got, boys? I'm gonna go first. All right, I'm gonna steal it from everyone. There you go. Uh, space truckers had the best costumes. Um, oh, basically, I didn't even think of that one. Dang it! Anything oh, yeah. from like, yeah. If, yeah. if we're talking about, um, uh, ty what, tier? not Tyrion, Tywin, Tywin Lannister, Tywin. Yeah. his robotic kind of getup that was awesome. Um, just All the, the glowing the... light from yes. underneath him as he was the like, dick. <laughs> the dick. <laughs> 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 That's different if you're a car guy, the undercarriage glow. Um, but yeah, so I, I would say that Space Truckers had the best costumes. Um, I'm just going to grab that and say that that was my pick too. Specifically Tywin Lannister being a half-human cyborg that also weirdly kind of dressed like a Nazi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he definitely um, didn't do good things. Yeah, yeah. wild. Great. Well, Great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback off them as well. Uh, oh, I was going to go with Little Shop of Horrors. I was going to go with Little Shop of Horrors or Mandy uh, for this one. Mandy, I was going to mainly go for because of the uh, the crazy, like, yeah. hell dudes. Mutant yeah. People. But they were the, the only ones that really had, like, kind of costuming. And that's also the kind of argument I had against Little Shop because, like, the puppetry is just so good. But everybody else in it is just wearing, like, kind of normal attire. Mm -hmm. But, man, once you said Space Truckers, <laughs> like, I've actually just changed my mind. Even the people in the Just thinking about it. Yeah, like, they, mean, were they were all wacky. They, yeah, they were all, yeah. like, like how they should be if they were in space. It's yeah, like, a very and they have a lot of character to them. Like, they're, they're, the costumes have a lot of character to them, so that's a great answer. Yeah. And I'm definitely going with that as well. So, Dylan, are you going to be the odd man out here? I am. I'll all mention, right. Space Truckers was my easy number two. Like, yeah, okay. I, I looked at it, but I won't lie. I, I Tom Hardy picked on this one. I'm picking Bronson. <laughs> And uh, oh, he's not wearing anything. Yeah. No, 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 no. All right, so for like half the movie, he's yeah, it's totally nude and greased up. But think about how many times he has those eccentric. Oh my gosh, the stuff. art. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the yeah. art stuff. There's a lot of times that we're ignoring that this was like, oh, this was kind of quirky and fun, like with this stuff. And also knowing that behind the scenes, that that was literally uh, what's his face's mustache. Mm -hmm. Like that was uh, Bronson's actual mustache mm. that he shaved, and then he gets the Tom Hardy to wear it throughout the oh, movie. I didn't know that. that little costume trivia fact. I didn't. Was just like it's the gross. I, this thing that it's came super, out of that movie. Yeah, but that's which says something. Yeah. But I'm like tickled silly by that. But also knowing that it just has those eccentric pieces, and I was just like, I kinda wanna I, I just wanna give it to that for that reason alone. I was like and I was like, I feel like Space Trekkers is gonna sweep this one ahead of time. So I was like, let me be a little bit contrary for just this one. <laughs> definitely. Especially fun. I mean Space Trucker definitely deserves it. Can yeah. we get you all saying tickled it? silly trending? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag tickled silly. Not t you're not tickled pink. Yeah, you're it's tickled, tickled silly. silly. Moving. All moving right, on. moving on. We are going on to most forgettable. Going to mm. knock out some of these more like negative oriented ones, I guess. Well, I can go ahead and grab this one. Go I imagine I won't be the only one to say this, but it's kind of a funny story. Huh. Mm. I, if you were to ask me to pick out any detail of this movie, mm. I couldn't really point you to anything in particular. I remember thinking it was a fine movie, mm. but no scene in it really sticks out as particularly memorable. Mm. Uh, I am going to pick up on Nathan as well. I'm telling you, ever since we did that bracket challenge, <laughs> this side of the couch is That's together. Fair. That's yeah. fair. I could totally uh, see you guys at this point. But I, I agree. It's it's the same for me. It's kind of a funny story. Uh, the only thing that kind of stuck out to me was Zach Galifianakis, but again, it's kind of still feels like Zach Galifianakis just giving off another performance that I've seen before. 
Uh, and to me, it's just another sad teen drama kind of movie and doesn't do anything particularly outstanding. It's just there. Uh, it's not It's not particularly bad. It's not particularly good, in my opinion. Uh, it's just It just kind of exists, and it kind of falls in that very forgettable category that uh, some of our previous movies have fallen into. Mm. Um, what was that? The one with the tree. Oh, flip. flips, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I feels like with the like branches is gnarled. Yeah, you're looking at a movie that won the award for should have a sequel in my book. <laughs> I, I, so, I, I tread lightly, <laughs> Mason. I, I hate to do this to you, buddy, but I think half our podcast is is clueless on good movies because mine is definitely gonna be Birdemic. Like Ooh. that is not forgettable. No, no, well, no, no, nope. Here's my no. thing. Okay, okay. Here's, okay. Here's, okay. All right. Let me yeah. let me tell you how much of that movie I remember. Calling. <laughs> ah, ah. Uh, no, you're you're sounding way too much like a bird. It's like Neep, you're right. Neep, you're right. <laughs> sound like seagulls. That's how much yep. it's already fading from my my mind. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, the girl getting partially nude, not even partially. Like, <laughs> and, and then they start making out and zooms down to their feet, where yeah. it's just. <laughs> and I think there was like some jam on a person's face at one point. But yeah. if you ask me about the most Gatorade. other parts of that, right. I'm like, nah, they talked about a lot of global warming bullshit or something, but, like, I couldn't tell you scene for scenes, like, how we even got there to begin with. Yeah. Birdemic is already slipping from my mind, and I couldn't be happier. But it's so bad, it's so memorable. There's no way, like, the opening scene where, like, he goes up to, like, start stalking that girl. No, 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 but it's what I've said in my review was the that, The birds like, dive bombing the city. <laughs> so here's my thing, right? I said, and I hold to this, is that it's... It's a very uninspired bad. It's bad because it lacks, not because that it's actively, crazily... Like, again, comparing it to like something like Thanks Killing, which actually tries to put an effort in, tries to do something. None of these actors tried. That, I can't even say I called them actors see, per se See, in this that movie, makes so. it stand out for me, is that like mm -hmm. it is genuinely bad. Nothing about it is good. This is a very... Whereas like Thanks Killing is like, we're trying to be bad, and we're doing a good job of being bad. It's, like, it's bad vanilla ice cream for me. Like it's one of those things where I'm just like, yeah. Okay, I see your, I see your right. argument there. Yeah, tell you, good, good analogy there. I thought he was the metaphor man. <laughs> nah, I've got I thought that. Mason I always came up with those. No, no, I did something good there in the bracket one, but I can't remember what it was. I can't time. either. Yeah, I remember Mason did a pretty bad one. Which I one was did, that? I did the worst one. Yeah, <laughs> you'll buffet. have to watch our bracket challenge videos <laughs> to find it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Don't worry, that'll be coming out after this. Of course. So, <laughs> um. Dylan, I'm happy that you were able to forget Birdemic. Unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to. Uh, but my pick is actually Promare. Promare, <laughs> even right after I had seen it, mm -hmm. it just seemed like my brain was a little bit jumbled up. And, like, I didn't... I recently watched our review on it, and I don't... I didn't remember much... Much. Much. much of it. That's how much his brain is messed up with yeah, Promare. It's just, it's just garbage. No, I'm just kidding. It... For whatever reason, I just remember crazy robotic fights and burnish. It's about all I got for that. <laughs> yeah. It is burning passion. <laughs> burning passion. Like, for instance, I didn't remember that they were firemen. Didn't, um, didn't remember that at all. They were only firemen for, like, like the first, like, 20 minutes. minutes. But in our review, we <laughs> yeah. mentioned how often, like, they were fighting fires and, like, burnish. And I, all that slipped. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, yeah, Promare was, not to say again that it was bad, but it was just something that did not stick with me. As much as I would love to tear into that, I'm not. I, mean, I think you <laughs> really a good fella. tore against it enough yeah. in the review. I was about to say, go watch the review. We I was fighting that. an uphill battle. Yeah. I was yeah. I was at the bottom of a 90 degree incline. Yeah. You were in the battle you of guys the at the top. You were throwing <laughs> barrels like Donkey Kong at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, next discussion, boys. Uh, most surprising movie. Mm -hmm. And it could be for any, you know, it could be like you thought it was going to be good, it was bad. Thought it was going to be bad, it was going to be good. Anything like somebody that. Somebody uh, I'll take it. Go for it. Um, yeah. Dear Zachary. Mm -hmm. That that movie is... I mean, it's not really fair to pick that movie because it's meant to be a surprise, but I did not expect a documentary from Price, and I did not expect the kind of documentary that I received in the slightest. So, yeah, in every way it could have been surprising, it was. Mm -hmm. So that's my choice. Uh, I will go next, uh, just keeping it in sequential order. Uh, I was most surprising a Slumdog Millionaire. Um, hmm. I remember I watching this when I, I yeah. remember watching it when I was younger, and I, I remember enjoying it. But a lot of movies that I watched when I was younger, I didn't watch with like a critical eye at all. I just like just enjoyed it just just to watch it. Hmm. And after watching it on this rewatch, it's just too long. It tries doing too much. Uh, the soundtrack is absolutely abysmal in that movie. Uh, it does that thing uh, that I think's really lame that like 
it's just the ending just wraps up everything a little too nicely and it's it all I about Bollywood like dance after that. Yeah. I, I, see, I don't like I don't like that at all. Like it has this like realistic kind of world and then it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna bust out in the song. Hey, that was back <sighs> when uh what was it, flash mobs were a thing? Flash oh, yeah. flash mobs. Mm-hmm. It was in the yeah. f- exact same time. Yeah. So So it was trending. Yeah, like, was, was it was it like the swine flu around at this time too? Yeah, I don't care. Just because it's topical doesn't need to be in my movie. Somebody may have got a swine flu. To be fair, we don't know. We don't know. They don't eat. They... Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> We're showing our whiteness here, boys. Oh, all right. Let's go on to Dylan's most surprising pick uh, of season three. Uh, mine's gonna be wolf walkers, actually. Um, I just like wolves. First, gotta kill that wolf. <laughs> yeah. No, for for practically being a forty percent animated podcast at this point, based on our movie track history with Damn, stuff, that's true. <laughs> it is. It was one of those. Just it was refreshing enough, where, and it definitely wasn't a perfect movie. Like it had its flaws. It had Sean Bean was super annoying and all that jazz. But like I don't know something about the different art style, the different setting, the, like just a little bit of different lore that I wasn't like incredibly familiar with. That was just enough for me to be like, huh, all right. All right, this doesn't feel for, like incredibly formulaic like most of like the other animated movies, and I think it just does just enough difference to be like okay, because I heard animated, and I won't lie, like I don't even like if you ask me on paper, like do I dislike animated movies? I'm like not necessarily, but if you ask me in the context of this podcast, I'm like fucking kill me. Okay. <laughs> no, quit. I, uh, it's cartoons. That's like, how I am with like anime. Um, Whenever anime gets brought up, I'm like okay, I'm gonna try to. Go into this with a positive mind. You right. never do. <laughs> that's not true. I like to do, yeah. but there's also something I don't like. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's what you know takes that bar low. Mm. Um, my pick is actually going to be the Little Prince. I'm glad that Jill is here hey. because I'm going to say that in her histories of picking movies or suggesting movies, it's not super hot stuff. <laughs> so like the Little Prince came along, we we're gonna have her on, and it was. It was a delight. That mm-hmm. movie is super good, and I went into it with the lowest expectations and came out very well on top. <laughs> it's a very cool. It had a little bit of everything, too. It had a little bit of a stop motion, had a little bit of, you know, Pixar type stuff. stuff. He does, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it was yeah, it was well rounded. But, yeah, so that's my thing. Do you think that was her plan? Like, she hit us with Third Star and then just gave us a movie <laughs> so that was significantly yeah. better so yeah. she could win most yeah. surprising by the time I don't, I don't blame her at all. It's, it's, it's a long term. It's a long play, but <laughs> yeah. Jill seems like the kind of person it's to be able to It's a big gamble, too. It, it might not have been a oh, return yeah. after that. No, no, no. <laughs> it paid off, though. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely paid off. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're laughing, having a good time, a little jolly time, a lot of mirth, a lot of laughter. Uh, so mm-hmm. let's let's go let's go ahead and start throwing some hands. It's a place in Skyrim. Yeah. No, that's, that's just a word that people <laughs> use. But anyway, what's that word mean? Let's I'm um, continue on my train of thought and go into most hated movie. Ooh. Yeah, Mason. I want to get the negativity out of the way up front, so we can kind of. Uh, most hated movie. I'm gonna be honest. I can't find it. Um, <laughs> put Mason on the spot and he drops. Well, then don't go. Damn, I mean, I'll go first. Yeah, you go. go All right, I'll go first. Uh, I mine was it. mine was definitely <laughs> e- mine was definitely easy A. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just really did not enjoy the movie. Um, it just. It just felt like like it's trying to be like in a real world sense, but it doesn't treat the situation in like in a real way. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hated it from the very premise when it was like I'm Emma Stone and nobody looks at me. And again, you're gonna be like, that's such a little thing to pick at. But like, I feel like that's the foundation that the movie is kind of built on because like she's almost getting this attention, and I still just did not enjoy it. I mean, the characters were insufferable. The soundtrack was nothing to remember at all. Um, and just that whole ending where it went completely off the rails with her dressing up in that slutty outfit, getting in front of the school, doing a whole dance number, none of all the teachers apparently enjoying it, her advertising her OnlyFans, and then ending with AIDS <laughs> is just enough for me. I don't so what about the quiz list anymore? <sighs> okay, there's that one thing! <laughs> yeah, he, he did love the quiz list. Yeah, he loved the quiz I got, it got a guilty little laugh out of him. Uh-huh. I was like, get out of here, Quiznos. You're a slut. <laughs> <laughs> my, my only qualm with that answer is just, like, when I look at that movie, I think of just a standard-ass comedy. Like, it is the most level ground as far as that genre goes, and it's nothing spectacular, but it's nothing awful either. It's just right down the middle. In my opinion, it was my most hated. I my, see Mason's point, but yeah, my Mason's most, fixing to come back at me. And no, I'm no, no. Well, I, all I got maybe. is this. An honorable mention. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> honorable mention, though, to Birdemic. 
Okay. It's, oh. It's not my okay. number one. Okay. But that movie was supposed to be bad. It was almost like a spiteful pick for Price for Spooky Month. It was it was a lot of shit that Price threw at us. It's not gonna work this time. It's not my most hated. Whatever. Instead, he wants though, his own That's words. what I wanted. <laughs> Instead, I am gonna have to take a jab at Dylan and say that Bronson was actually my most hated movie. Wow, wow. I was wow. expecting uh, Tubular. I think you'll yeah. see an appearance from that later <laughs> yeah. on. But I'm sure it will. Bronson, I just. Even now, thinking about like all of the shit that he got away with, and just yeah. how yeah. stupid like the whole fun with it. process <laughs> was. Loop me up, loop me up, yeah. Yeah. quicker. quicker. Him. And then not only yeah. all of that, but also getting a movie made about you, yeah. like everything it's true. fell Mason into wants this criminal's guy's killed. Lap. He doesn't yeah, want yeah. it. He doesn't want it. Like I understand why. <laughs> like, we, Mason has said on several times on air, just kill the criminals. I was, kill just, people I was furious with this guy because it was just like you gave him everything you wanted. He gave him everything he wanted. And then you made a movie about him, and then it's just like, like, what else is he gonna get away with? He's just being an asshole for no reason. Anyways, that was my most hated movie. I'm still just detesting it, thinking about it. Like it's just awful. I'm tickled silly, boys. <laughs> Second time. We should get like little trophies. I never thought about that. Just like a like a poop emoji, like. Oh man, we'd have to have so many trophies for these yeah. awards, though. That'd be like, oh, that'd be anyway. perfect. Uh, I'll go ahead and go on this yeah. one for yep. definition on this one. So. You know, Mason, right back at you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> you definitely threw some stinkers on it. But not this season. This season you were pretty okay. Price, however, <laughs> Price like, uh, okay? threw, a, threw an interesting little animated film at us. Mm. And he's thinking he's about to get some cowabunga, but he's getting a lot of color in your face. We're talking prom hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So here's my, here's my long gripe on this movie. Summed up, because I don't want it to be a long rant. Go watch a review for that. Is that... Promare comes from, like, a studio that I genuinely enjoy. They put out anime that I've liked. I know their stuff. So you hear a movie, and I was like, expectations, which is the death of this whole thing. <laughs> I, I had expectations going into this. An animated thing? Expectations? Sure, let's go in. I automatically start off and see the movie's runtime is like two and a half hours, and I'm like, it doesn't need to be that long. Either. It is an hour fifty! Whatever. It is what is wrong long. with you? It's an hour fifty, and ten minutes of that is credits. Okay, so it feels like two and a half hours, which <laughs> only goes to my argument of saying it was way longer than it needed to be for <laughs> nothing. Like, say what you will, but it was obnoxious colors that blared and deafened me, and to the point where I was just... I felt like I was losing my senses, not like losing my mind. I mean, like, I couldn't see, that my hearing was overloaded. It felt just it was like, blah. For so much, it was an attack on my, like, stimuli, and it was exhausting. You it, said, say what you will. Do I get to answer that? No. Okay. Nathan, you go ahead. <laughs> Mine is Promare. That... You said, say what you will, and I want a will. I meant Nathan. Okay. Meant you had the will. So, <laughs> Promare was an overload of the senses. Uh -huh. For me, the one that I dislike the most this season is one that I just found so incredibly boring that I felt like it was as though I had been flipping the channels on the TV oh, no. and happened to stop <laughs> when this movie was playing. Mason's just like, like, oh no. <laughs> um, not Mason's. Okay, good. Uh, it's Creed. I yeah! didn't oh! care at all for that movie. I he thought did. it was so incredibly boring and did nothing huh. surprising in the slightest. Like, I... I don't like that movie. I don't understand how it became so. I mean, Dude, I guess it's well. It's that Rocky. Yeah. It's that Rocky fan like, base, I, man. That sure, thing. Will, that thing will outlive all of us. You, just because you, people love fucking Rocky. You know what? Due to his choice and his reasoning, I'm actually changing my answer to Creed. Because both of those were like those were honestly the two I was thinking about between this. But you saying like it being just like really forgettable and like the thing for me is that's really formulaic as well. Yeah. Because the are Easy A, actually, oh, easy. even though like I dislike I, this I dislike I dislike Easy A a lot. Like it li it's trying something. Yeah. Korean, it feels like like I could close my eyes, wake up in like the thirty minute mark, and be like, oh, he's probably on his way to the top. To close me, my eyes, wake up in an hour, and be like, Creed he's probably was down. The safe bet. Like they, it was like a cash in. Don't feel better when we pick Highly formulaic. <laughs> Like, it was it was not hard for them to make that movie at all. Mm. Like, there was nothing clever that was being thought The of. most difficult thing was paying Sylvester Stallone to come back, probably. Yeah. Oh, he had nothing else going on. Yeah, he was <laughs> chilling. He could use a paycheck. Literally. Dylan, I've got to admit, man, you just... 
you took the cake for basically three movies Hell yeah. in the most hated. I just took a couple movies just to clean that, <laughs> that and the accolades. To me, and you, <laughs> you have taken a turn <laughs> it like this season. I don't think you got touched on the last Nathan one. Nathan didn't get one shout out there, did he? Yeah. Neither wow. did you. Yeah, yeah, did probably. No, he got probably. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he got probably. Yeah, which is fine. He, he hated that movie a lot. <laughs> but anyway, uh, going towards the hatred route, uh, going to go to best villain. Mm. I can do that. Please. All right. Um, what we got? I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm split, so I'm gonna say the two first. Uh, the parasite from the thing was pretty bad. I mean, it was obviously had like a 100% success rating up until it didn't. <laughs> and then, but what did have a 100% success rating was the zombies from Wreck. Um, yeah. The I'm gonna give it probably to the Wreck yeah. zombies just because like the thing was cool. I remember ranting and raving about how. I thought that it looked really good. The the yeah. face and the head splitting open, the bodies just like coming apart, the weird like scorpion looking guy that was like two bodies yeah. together. Mm -hmm. All that was incredible. But the wreck zombies were so much more visceral and in your face, going up and down the staircase, flinging people off, jumping off of the staircase itself. Just let's yeah, let's take a second to think about that. If they're like a zombie like rabies kind of thing, why would they throw somebody off like the balcony? Wouldn't mm -hmm. they just want to, like, eat them and nibble on them? No, maybe well, they're not so that efficient. Did they, they throw just, them off, or was the... They maybe the leap down, but chased jumped, them down. Yeah, like, like, there's a that, lot that could have been that, too. It's also, they were, like, yeah. flailing around trying to get to people, and they mm -hmm. were hella strong, evidently. Like so. that part, like, near the end where they chase them up the stairs, and, like, mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. So mm -hmm. I'm probably going to give it to Rex, just because... It was it was a hand grenade in a very small area. Yes. Yeah. Not not a very good, so good situation. So I've got one in a very different direction. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite villain this season was more just a lighthearted pick. Mm -hmm. Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that right. Not door. even Yzma. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, Kronk. Yeah, Kronk <laughs> was the best was a great villain. I, I like that. I do too. Very like entertaining. He's like, in a very broad departure from mm. the zombies. Not quite <laughs> eating flesh, yeah. but he is working with the with the mastermind and, right. and yeah. carrying out her duties. So I felt like I went very traditional in comparison. Like I get Mason's idea of you know like the villain is technically this and yeah. the villain is definitely Kronk. So you know <laughs> more points for their creativity. Uh, but I'm gonna go very simple on mine. I'm picking Agent Smith. Like, if we're looking mm. at the Matrix, and I'm looking at, like, charismatic ones he that are just engaging. He was my second choice. I'm sure. I was, like, like, like I was surprised to hear that it Smith wasn't. Smith is incredible. Right. But I just, I, Kronk is so funny. You that's fair. That's for Hugo Weaving, too. I, I love Hugo Weaving, dude. Hugo Weaving brings it, man. And, Absolutely. like, just to be, like, this plain suit amongst plain suits, but just seeing the slight, like, because it's not like he oversells. He does it just enough to make you be, like... I want out of here. I want, and his whole speech to Morpheus is like, mm. just want some of that great little stuff. The vein popping out yeah, of his head. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, Hugo Weaving is great for being a very, like, doing intense, but subtly. And I really dig mm -hmm. that about him on that Yeah, one. it's too bad where it continues from there with yeah, the subsequent that, movies. It's but a little wackier this, from that yeah. point. But in one, Matrix 1, he does a great job for not going completely over the top. And having billions of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to echo Dylan's sentiment and say, like, I think they get bonus points for their creativity on this. Uh, because I took the traditional route as well. Uh, I, the teacher my, from Easy A. My, <laughs> my, <laughs> is Easy A. my honorable mention was going to be uh, the villain from Wolf Walkers, uh, mm -hmm. the preacher guy. Oh, yeah. He just he felt like actually dynamic uh, and felt like it really felt like it, he was really it, set up to be this like nah, I'm the mustache. Yeah. Like, I don't villain. know. In some ways, to me, he felt like he, he, he was just the historically accurate villain. Right. Like, this is just historically accurate to what somebody would have been doing at this time mm -hmm. and would have in no way seen themselves as being in the wrong. Yeah. They mm -hmm. thought they were doing yeah. the Lord's work. And I like that a lot. Like, I like seeing that depicted on screen. Uh, but my pick for uh, best villain is easily going to be uh, Nightcrawler. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think his name's Louis Bloom. I think I looked at it. Uh Jake Gyllenhaal's guy? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were talking about Riz Ahmed. That guy wanted a Riz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the worst guy. He should be happy with where That's he's a, at. He's a villain and then... Uh... And Listen, man, worldly. it's been six years. Uh, you said I was going to get a raise yeah. five years and 11 months ago. Uh, yeah. Didn't need it, apparently. Mm -hmm. But Jake Gyllenhaal's guy, like, he just felt so cold and calculating, and everything he did was like just a reflection of him trying to get to the top. Mm -hmm. Like He's always had this open-eyed expression where he's just wanting to devour anything that comes in his way. 
no matter what it is. Are, and, are you saying open eye it? because of how wide yeah, his eyes yeah. are the whole movie? Yeah, li- literally and metaphorically, yeah. because like his eyes are open the whole time, but like everything he sees, like he internalizes and studies and tries to become better, and is just a menace to absolutely everyone around him. Mm-hmm. And he treats everybody just like meat. Like that discussion that he had with the producer lady, yeah. and he's like, like I want to sleep with you. I have something that you want. Uh, and you have something that I want. Let's like come to an arrangement. She's like, "That's gross. Like, don't talk about it like that." And <laughs> I just really enjoyed his his character in that. He was a really good villain, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, so uh, continued on the bad train. There's one last kind of bad question I saw, and that would be uh, most memorable death. Mm. Ooh, I got it. I got it. This one I want to do right away. I feel like we're unanimous on this one, nope. maybe. Okay, nope, nope. we are definitely not. Mm-hmm. Rain of Fire was not this season. So. No, I know. I, I saw it at the top, and I almost picked that one, and I was like, that's not the same season. So, no, but it was Rain of Fire's first match in the bracket one, and we're going Cabin in the Woods. And the death for me is kind of like a little bit of a cheat answer, but it's the whole everybody jailbreak scene, right? Mm-hmm. Like, most memorable death for me, like, and even if I had to pick a favorite from that, it's going to be, like, the mer person oh, yeah. going over and killing that one guy. Yeah. Like, oh, you got to be kidding yeah. me. <laughs> if I had to nail it down, but really the whole segment for, like, memorable death, just because seeing all the, like, mythical monsters come out and just terrorizing And the people, blood just goes, like, fly. everywhere. Yes, oh, that, I so love good. that so much. So I, oh, man, like, I saw that, and I was like, dying, dying, yep. <laughs> it just feels like it had a jackpot. It was jackpot. cherry on top. It was. It was the whole movie, and then you had, like, basically, they brought you the dessert after uh-huh. the meal. It was the whole And you were still hungry. You, you know, know what? what? And if it was Remember Me, they would have gave it to me before dinner. So. Gosh, I forgot. <laughs> so, All right. I, forgot I feel that. like, I feel like my pick is going to be one that I would imagine somebody else, at least, is going to pick. I, Maybe. Hereditary. No. Oh. Sister. Man, oh no, man! You guys really yeah, talk about a, a, okay. We all have our own thing. All right, good for <laughs> us. Well, yeah, uh, the little sister dying in Hereditary is something that's really hard to ever get out of yeah. your mind. That's true. Ooh, oh, oh my God! It went out of my mind for harsh. a minute. I remember it now. <laughs> yeah, it was less fun um, than a unicorn. Man. You know, it's one of those things that, it. like, y- I feel like as a kid or something, you probably think that this could happen to you. Mm -hmm. That you could be sticking your head out of a car window and it just get knocked off by a phone pole. But it actually happens in this movie. And it's a shock. The brother's reaction is so The brother's reaction and then like the mom and her oh, like man. just blood Shriek. curdling shrieks after he like just goes up to his room and goes uh-huh. to sleep and in the morning oh man yeah that, yeah. that is rough it it's a very was, good call there it was a harsh series of scenes that happened after yeah. that all right uh, i'll want to go next uh uh, honorable mention to Ride Your Wave, of course. Uh, that was gonna be the one. Key. I was gonna. I was gonna Memorable pick, death. But I, I, I thought like this would be. I thought this one would win across the board. But I'm, I'm definitely going with Dear Zachary. Uh, the oh, second twist God. in it. Yeah, that's a really good choice. Yeah, that's the one that definitely got me because I still remember the moment, like in the documentary, where like it, like it's telling this story, like that. The first kind of twist happens. Then it keeps going, and I still remember it fading to black, and then, like, the narrator's voice is kind of cracking, and then he's like, and then on August something something, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Mm. Oh, I, I like, and right then, I knew what had happened before it even came up and just hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, so that, that's something that I don't think will ever leave my mind. That was Would, really rough. Wouldn't it have been something if, if that was our best villain, the woman? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that really, that's that would be a good bit. There was an argument yeah. for it. There uh, definitely yeah. is an argument yeah. for it. I mean, we're, we were all just like, she's terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she sucked. Um, yeah. No, I my... wish that grandpa had killed her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah he, he talked about it yeah. plenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah you sure did. Grandpa, had. if you're watching it. Yeah, um, yeah. you deserved it. We feel you. Friend of the pod. If, if we're in the jury, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, most memorable death. <laughs> to be honest, all of those were pretty okay I, pretty I, got, okay. I, feel like, I feel like I really lowballed mine because mine is is either of the death scenes from It Follows um, the very beginning one with like the girl that's just running down her street and then ends up on the beach and like it shows like the clip of her like leg hanging over just broken uh-huh. or 
Peck when the guy runs up to his, or the guy's in his room and then his mom's knocking on the door. Oh, yeah, you see yeah. that? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm not going to forget either of those, just because I think I've seen that movie so many times, yeah. but either of those is, is fun by me. I think, I think that's... Hereditary one, though, I don't know how I forgot about that one. The, the I don't know how I did head. either, because that was really rough, especially like that. And the show was head. full of very gruesome deaths. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that last one was just goofy though. The one with like yeah. her just like yeah. cutting off her head, sort of. Anyways, yeah. yeah. So. All right, so our next uh, one we have Ooh, is guys. movie needing a sequel. Mm. And it okay. could be in your opinion, if you think it's it's just whatever, and I'll take it from the top. And I'm going with Emperor's New Groove. I know there's a show that kind I of like does it. a sequel to it. I know Kronk's New Groove exists. I haven't seen it. But Same like sequels. I just I would just like to see like you know Cusco and the uh, and uh, yeah, Pacha just going around just having a good time <laughs> and I enjoyed the world so much all the jokes in that movie land so well it's paced so so well the it's a short movie it's a, it's funny from top to bottom. Uh, and it's just filled with jokes throughout. So I'd love to just see another movie that same length with the same characters, doing the same kind of stuff. Bring Kronk back. Bring Isma back. Bring back everybody. Not, uh, except maybe the kids. Your answer kids is boy. Stay. They got a whole series after that. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. They even got Kronk's movie. And well, well I, I've got one care. for you. Yeah. I think the Social Network should have a sequel. Oh, I, want, I want it <laughs> That's to a be, better answer. <laughs> I, I want to see Facebook now. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to see every just 10 the years, dark yeah. twist <laughs> that Facebook has taken to where... Ha, I don't know if you've seen recently, but um, Apple has made it to where they can't get access to all the private information that they were skimming off of people's phones using their They app. definitely mm-hmm. used to do that because Facebook like would get... like If you typed in somebody's phone number... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would pull up their Facebook. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they blocked that, and um, apparently Zuckerberg has specifically told his employees oh, that they need to recently. hurt Apple nice. for having done that. Nice. Yeah. Like, make them punished. You yeah, know, yeah, just... yeah, That would be in- interesting. Yeah. Well, and plus, That'd like, good the Zuckerberg, like, especially now, is just looked at as, like, a robot. Like, everyone yeah. likes to joke yeah. around about how, like, soulless... Not because he's just the worst human being ever, but just how, like, he doesn't have any emotion, and he doesn't speak correctly in an interview and he doesn't do it. I mean you bring Jesse Eisenberg back and you try to make him maybe portray that I don't know mm, yeah. uh, my answer is actually Waterworld uh, because mm. it leaves you with this basically Mount Everest which I thought it was in Colorado for some reason but whenever they finally find land yeah. and then it just shows them like walking right and then it kind of pans out and that's it not to say that the world is any better uh, after that point, but maybe you just you make another series off of that, uh, like a Mad Max, but a lighter tone because everything's green. Yeah. You know, whenever they get to Everest, so I think Waterworld would be sweet. Yeah. Maybe not this many years now, <laughs> but like. Cause yeah, I was about to say, it feels like it missed you, the window. You would almost minute. have to remake Waterworld. Yeah. Only with the intention of making a sequel to it now. And Waterworld is pretty well known in the movie world oh, yeah. as being incredibly expensive and having not right. quite made its <laughs> Not money. worth yeah. the trouble to yeah. make it a giver. So that's probably why no one's picked it back up yeah. and touched it. <laughs> I still hold on to the concept that I like that. I felt like they landed on the same island that was Jurassic Park's like Isla Nubar, and I love the idea of a crossover <laughs> for a sequel. For whatever reason, it was like 60,000 feet above sea right, level. Right, right. And you never knew that. <laughs> it's just dinosaur tip on that one but <laughs> same movie for my answer i'm going back to cabin in the woods i want to see a sequel yeah. to that nice. so here's here's my spin on it right that's, I, that's a good one too. i had to think of an idea because i'm like it feels like the world kind of ended at the end of that one but yeah. i'm like all right let's let's play this concept what if now we're playing with like gods and deities or something like that and you see all these little controlled universes and now we can do like just whatever we want with it like now we can switch like keep the same formula aspect to it but then really twisted on, like, a sci-fi, like, concept of it, maybe. Or, you know, like, maybe the aliens from Alien are, like, one of the things under this progenitor, like, monster things. I don't know. There's, listen, that just... That's not our job. You make it. It's not my job to figure it out. (laughs) But it just is interesting enough to just be like, hell, they could do the same concept before the world blows up and still do something unique and different with it. I just like the spin on it, so... Man, that was such a good movie. Mm. And Dustin picked that thinking that we would all Ironically. Like, and all, it was one of our highest rated across the board yeah. that we all liked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I still find that hilarious. Mm. Um, so, uh, to keep it rolling, we're going to go with favorite score. 
I'm gonna get yelled at for this. <laughs> I'm ready Ooh. for it. I would all love right. to. Let's let's all shoot me. Cause like, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. <laughs> okay, so I've always said. That. You just said it earlier. Okay. <laughs> in defense of it or defending it. No. In offense to it. Yeah. With Slumdog. Like, I love the score of You Slumdog. have got to be kidding Because it's, it's like it's the Indian. All over it's again. so awful. <laughs> Everything it is like in the it Indian It's so to- hard. So? It doesn't matter. Oh my. It Movies are supposed matter. to be timeless. Like, Jurassic Park could watch that anytime and just like, I could be like 80 and be like, I love the dinosaur. If we're comparing <laughs> Jurassic Park to Slumdog, Slumdog. Millionaire, I get it. Like, it. No, one continue, definitely Mason. Outweighs this is your time. Yeah. Your yeah. yeah. The Here. reason why I like Slumdog, and I might just give it the honorable mention, is because, like, it is incredible, and it gives you that that vision, and obviously your ears can listen to it, too, into, like, the Indian culture, and, like, mm-hmm. some of the, the cool... That whole flash mob scene at the end is neat. Like, they are huge in the dance over there. Big deal. Like, that's just not something that we do, and that's fine. I don't care. Contract. But the... My actual answer is probably going to be the social network on this one, um, which has also been discussed by Nathan as, like, not very memorable. You didn't really get Trent Reznor's sort of uh, edge on it that you thought that you were going to, yeah. especially if you knew going into it that it was him. Except for the boating scene. That's it. I was going to say. The, scene, only, yeah. the only part I remember was the no, boating scene. I can't remember what the name... Carol of the Bells? No. It was something like that. Yeah, Anyways. Just the whole feel of that movie, the music really helped. The dark tone, all of it. So I'd probably give it to the social network, but man, Slumdog. I just love that, that whole thing. I loved it. I, I think it's a fine reason for it, like that answer, because I said itself, like, so much of the biggest reasons I had for it was, is it, is it, it follows the woman coming over here about to murder us? Sorry, this yeah. woman's walking. <laughs> like, just like, and it follows <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, she's walking in a very... Right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, really shout out to passion. whoever Nathan's neighbor is. Just incredibly <laughs> right distraught. The yeah. No, I, I like your answers for that because that's all the same reasons I said I enjoyed Slumdog is because they had that cultural aspect, which honestly, I'm, I'm good. I guess it's just my answer time with it now. Is like part of the reason I, I thought about it. But shit, dude, I also picked Jurassic Park, and how am I not going to pick that score? Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Get out! It is it is one of these like standout ones, and it didn't get enough love in the bracket. So I tried, uh, like I like I was wanting, like I was thinking about doing it because, like you know, like the opening like song is the most like iconic, like, iconic oh, one, like yeah. that, dun, 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 like that. But honestly, like I don't remember anything else in that movie score wise. The, the only thing I do remember is the theme uh, song. that's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. It is probably one of yeah, the best I theme songs. I was honestly, yeah. It's up there with Hogwarts. It's up there with Star Wars. Like the theme yeah. song itself. Well, I mean, John Williams, Williams did John Williams all Williams those, right? All yeah. yeah, and that's fine. But, yeah, like you said, I don't remember anything else from Jurassic Park besides obviously the movie, which like, is sometimes a good music. like yeah. like a good score. I hear a lot of the score in it, but I've seen that movie like on loop for my whole life, so it's a little different. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go with Promare. Uh, again, I tried, like I mentioned you all, like, just pay attention to the soundtrack as well. Like, it's so good. Like, all the songs in it are so good. Like, they're all, like, that uplifting, like, kind of rock music because, I mean, that's what, it matches the tone of the movie perfectly. Like, if you could just do, like, that burning passion, like, if that was, like, the score, that's exactly what the score is. It's just, like, this uplifting, pounding, uh, kind of rock uh, anthem throughout. There's so many good songs on it. And even when it has its downbeats, there's these good, like, kind of, like, operatic kind of songs to kind of, like, underscore, like, the, like, darker, like, kind of tones of the movie. So, that's, it was great, in my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna pick Jurassic Park. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, you can't beat that music. Yeah. It's, it's, uh... Feel good music. It mm-hmm. does make you feel good. It, it makes, makes you think that you're either about to get onto the island or off of the island. Right. Depending. Yeah. Either way. Because they play it twice. Uh-huh. <laughs> All so. right. Well, let's uh, go off the Jurassic Park thing. and We'll go with uh, favorite scene. Ooh. What everybody's favorite scene is. Yeah. Hang on. i got to find it. Okay. So, there's two again. Uh, Cabin you in have the to woods. pick one. I know. So, Cabin in the Woods, <laughs> the, the release scene. Yeah. Obviously a cinematic masterpiece, mm. right? That movie... <laughs> It, it felt like it was just very, like, to itself the whole time, even with, like, some of the cabin stuff and the acting. Then they just got to have fun. Mm-hmm. Then they said, you know what? All the budget right here. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so that scene was incredible. 
But just in the past, like, three months with this group, I have sent more crap about Andrew Garfield screaming at Jesse Eisenberg about his shares and how he was going to come at him with everything he had and he better lawyer up, asshole. Like, that is my favorite scene of at least this season. Um, it's something about, like, uh, Justin Timberlake says, like, hey, you know, you got to get the hell out of here. And, oh, like, he froze the that's account. That's so cheesy. I and know what said, you're going to say. He said, sorry. Oh, my, my Prada was at the cleaners. Mm-hmm. Anyways, go watch oh, it. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, I like standing next to you because it makes me feel big. I mean, that was, like, the ending of that scene, uh, which yeah. I like that. But, yeah, that just that whole scene was good. Uh, I guess I'll go on this one. Makes sense in mm-hmm. the order of things. Yep. Hate to cop out again. Jurassic Park scene. Uh, <laughs> T-Rex. Wait, wait, oh. T-Rex gets out. Fuck <laughs> 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 those kids. <laughs> Terrorizes the kids on the scene for a while. Ian Malcolm gets knocked it's over. funny that you said for a while. Like, a, a good healthy for while. probably too long. No, nope. for maybe 20 minutes it felt like. Ignorant. Yeah. Not enough. <laughs> one of the best scenes in cinema. Perfect kind of don't realize Perfect. how much of that movie was that scene. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take uh, half of Mason's answer, and I'm going to take half of Dylan's answer. Because my honorable mention as well was the Cabin in the Woods, like just pressing the button and just everything Hell coming yeah. out at once. <laughs> so uh, but I don't know really how you can possibly compete with uh, the, the T-Rex coming out for the first time. Just that build up of like that iconic, like the water shaking, like you hear the whole world like shake. Mm-hmm. And like, the and then and, and then the wire snap. You see the little claw, and it's just like it's it builds up to the suspense so perfectly. And then you have that iconic T Rex, uh, kind of roar, roar yeah. and and then just everything that goes on from there it gets a little bit slapsticky at points. We'll yeah, give it that. It definitely does. Where's he, he plays, Yeah, like where he's like, like where he, like, like he's big yeah. That's what I was. He plays around. chicken with humans. Like yeah. just sitting there like staring at him like. If it just would have cut, like they, they definitely could have trimmed some stuff of it off, uh, but they shouldn't have, and they didn't. Yeah, the, like when they're spinning the, the thing around, but like man, whenever like it, it actually gets out, it's chasing after uh, Jeff Goldblum, and man, it's so good. And then it finally gets the lawyer and eats him. It's mm-hmm. so good. Okay. Was it him? Well, Janeiro, the lawyer. Yeah. yeah, he's in the bathroom. He's in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. I thought you yeah, had yeah, that yeah. big fat guy that like basically no, that's Nedry wrote the dead scene. Yeah. Oh, he does it almost, almost yeah. a yeah. worse way. His yeah, yeah, God, yeah. 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 oh, that was awful. That okay, blood goes so down in the mud. Mm. I guess in the same vein of honorable mentions, I can't not mention Mandy and Nick Cage in the bathroom. <laughs> yes, he loves so that so much. Good. It's such a great oh, oh. <laughs> It is really fun. I won't even fault you for it. Like, like some of some of his best performance ever. I think I loved it. But okay. the Matrix, okay. the Matrix was also a part of this season, mm. and I love the lobby scene in the Matrix. Yeah. Them walking through with the trench coats through the metal detectors and then being like, oh, hold on a second, I need to check you. And they just open their trench coats and there's just all these guns. And he's like, holy shit. And then they both just look at each other. And then just... And then all hell breaks. Yes. It's so incredible. Good. Yeah. It's, it's very good. And that's just one of the five scenes from the Matrix that were yeah, with you that, for That years. really could have been picked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine from the Matrix probably would have been the one where like the helicopter like hits the uh, the building. Oh, the building. Yeah, yeah. that one was so good to yeah. me. Um, all right, but uh, let's move on to our next bracket with or our next discussion bracket with, again. with uh, <laughs> best world. Hmm. What's the best world you all got? Ooh, ooh, you got it. You got ooh. it. It's easy. It's so easy. You put a mall in there. It's easy. Is it easy? Eh? I hope it's Tim and Eric. It's not. I'll allow there it. was never a Tim and Eric movie in this season, and there shouldn't be any more Tim and Eric movies on this podcast. <laughs> Has to be Waterworld, dude. Are you kidding me? Mm. Get on this. And I listen. <laughs> let me put it this way. Get on a jet ski and call my yeah. the end of the enemy. <laughs> let me put it this way. I can't swim. Waterworld is, on paper is a nightmare, but I have to hope that like by this time I've either just died or I've learned to swim. One of the two has happened. So either way, I'm probably doing both. pretty well. Probably both, honestly. Could be living on an atoll as well. That's true. I could be on a boat that just gets blown up because we <laughs> took just, a kid. You're I don't just know. a sex worker. Uh, you know what? That's the only skill that you're good <laughs> at. Listen, all of these are great possibilities, but all I know is everything's got a little salt on it. Waterworld. <laughs> um, Waterworld is a is a very good answer. I think it's 
probably be. I a, keep seeing a little fish over here. Too. A good matchup. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm gonna go Matrix. I think that that movie put the most effort into two different worlds yeah. into a movie. So it's just the Matrix for me. I am going back to one of my previous answers and going with Pro Bear. You're I want sick. everything on fire. So, like, everything is just like so colorful. All the characters are so outgoing. There's so much going on all the time. Like they, you're never going to be bored in this world. There's also awesome pizza. Who doesn't love pizza? But don't you pizza get arrested all the just all the time? Well, and... yeah, yeah. We got to kill that guy who freezes everybody. We got to take care of him. <laughs> Uh, but everything else, like I said, like the characters Watch are so neat, cartoon. the world's so neat. It's 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 like de it's super detailed. Like it goes into the background of the world in this big exposition dump, which again, which I'm, is one of your not too things. big of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, which is why I didn't put. I, this is definitely not my best movie or my favorite movie uh, because there are a lot of qualms with it. But I still enjoy the world a lot and just enjoy being in it. As long, I mean, it's the same reason like a lot of people said Mad Max when we picked it. It's just like. There's so much all ah. the time. That's why you picked Waterworld. Same reason. So I, I won't lie to you. It's the most fun. And like, even yeah. like, and Matrix was a thought, but then I thought I was just like, but what's the chance that I'm going to be a Neo or a Morpheus <laughs> in this case and I'm just living in the world, Matrix world? Well, uh. I, I'm also going to pick the Matrix. And I do want to just make a quick little note that in the Matrix, the robots decided that, what, what was the year... Like that, it there was, was like, a certain year was a, that was the best. No, yeah. not not what the real year was. Oh, okay. Whenever they built the Matrix, they were, they decided that a certain year was the best year for humans to have lived in, mm. and they just like mm. had it in that era. It's probably the it was like early nineties. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was early like early relative 90s. to the real. That's time where you want to be. <laughs> well, turns out that maybe that's actually true. I mean, twenty twenty was crazy 2021 shaping up to be pretty crazy too yeah, maybe yeah. we should have just slowed hey, down the 90s yeah. had the best music you had Goo yeah, Dolls, music. Dolls, that was you yeah, i disagree that was Last like the Fox that, that was the air of like Nerf 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 yeah yeah was it Metallica big it's like even if you're stuck in the matrix and you're not yeah. neo you're still living in a good time to have been a human it might be a battery in the real world but at least you're having a good time i'm a battery in this life and i don't care all right. Well, if we're gonna be talking about music and everything, let's go ahead and hop on over to some of our some of us uh, our favorite uh, pick here, and that's our favorite song. Do you want to yell at me now or later? Uh, later. I'll go first. Uh, so, uh, honorable mention, of course, uh, to "Feed Me" from Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, I was really close to picking that one, but like I've gone back and kind of listened to it. If you don't have the visual to go along with it, it's not really as fun because like. The best part about that song is, to like me, is when, like, song. It, mm -hmm. the, the best part. The old puppet song, yeah. like, singing along as well. Yeah, like, that's my yeah. favorite part about it, is the visual to go along with it. And, uh, surprisingly enough, it's not going to be Brand New Story in Roger Wave. Legit was going to pick that. Surprising. Uh, but I'm going to go with, going to keep that fire train going, keep this burning passion going, and picking picking the theme song for Promare. It's, uh, it's called in, it's it called Inferno. I, I will honestly send it to you. Well, it's on Spotify now. It is I don't want to listen to so it. <laughs> good. Like again, I have that listed on so here. Real quick, I'm not trolling you. I, all. No, I'm, I, gonna, I'm just gonna really mention like it. before we had gotten this list together and like you know we had all picked our answers. Price and I were debating back and forth whether or not this season had a lot of great awesome answers <laughs> for each and every single question. And he assured me that this one had the most to choose from. It was gonna be yeah. good selections. Price was at a buffet picked, of answers. You have picked Pro Mare like four or five fucking yeah. times. Because Pro Mare, like, if we did all of our like seasons put together, I would like Pro Mare has like the best production of like some like the movies that we have seen. In my opinion, like, I think when like they go for style, I think they absolutely killed it. When they go for setting a tone, I think they absolutely killed it. When it comes to storytelling, they did not kill it. <laughs> That's where they hugely drop the ball. Seems but like a big thing to drop the ball in the movie. Yeah, yeah, which is my point. That's like it's not going to be my favorite movie. I didn't advocate it for our bracket, as you all will see later. Uh, it's just it, it. But in production values and like tone, like I think it crushes it, and the soundtrack really aids that. And I could have picked either this one or Gallant ones. I think both of those are great songs that complement the movie perfectly. But Inferno is um, such a banger. Hmm. I want to go last. All right, I'll go. <laughs> um, okay. A runner-up is uh, is Dracula from The Matrix. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think it. 
<laughs> well, Bryce will argue that it dates the movie. Whatever, I guess. A All right, well, at least I don't have to say it. But you got to keep in mind, it's the, the setting is the place. is an artificial exactly. setting, yeah. so it's so, supposed to be dated in that time period. Which is, it's a wonderful song. Even today, it's a great song. <laughs> yeah. If it comes on at a bar, you're gonna just lose it. Yeah, <laughs> do that, man. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm also gonna cop out and go with J O at the end of Slumdog. I promise that's my last time that I. Price is gonna. You only do it a problem. I told you. Times. I saw it one second See, of ten. Times. I hated Slumdog. You pick Slumdog. You hated Promare. I picked Promare. You picked it like twice as many times as I have. That is not true. Very true. It's actually true. Yeah. You can do the numbers. Best, uh, best world and yeah, it's it's just a fun fun song. Yeah, it's score. Yeah, it earned it. Sorry, go ahead. I'm lost, Nathan. Okay, I, I know because you had a very specific answer for this. Um. Well, so whenever we were first talking about these categories, I felt like I didn't really have any strong pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said you're opting out of this category. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You did say that. I've, uh, <laughs> I, I've come around. Mm-hmm. I, I've had a revelation. In like the 45 minutes we've been right. talking? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Matrix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the end of The Matrix, Rage Against the Machine plays. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. And that uh, is perfect for that Freedom. Movie. Freedom mm-hmm. is my choice. Yes. It's, uh... That's Hell a, of a song. It's a perfect way to end that movie, too. It's, oh, it, yeah. Like, it, the tone, it's perfect for it. Yeah. Man, that's a good one. So, honorable mentions to, like, just the whole Matrix soundtrack, for that matter. Like, any of that. Like, that's fun. what got me into that genre of music, was this movie. Yeah. Like, it, it was... It was a thing in a good At way. At the very beginning, there's a there's a part right that like some guy, oh, yeah. he's, like, he's the hacker guy, he's like throws it into the microwave. There's some like Beastie Boys song or something uh, in there. The I think Deftones. Maybe it's is Deftones. One of the other ones that yeah, is in the first. Yeah, yeah. Those were boys, but I'm gonna mention just all of that. But it's. Guys, I'm he sorry. went last for a reason. Oh, it's, don't you dare say the theme song. It's got memed. <laughs> yeah! To oblivion. I already know what it is. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, no. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not to say that I think it's the best one and I love it, but this thing won't leave my stupid head. <laughs> yeah. this, this is why brothers almost took down uh, I know. Oh, oh, this, this is the brothers' <laughs> earworm where it's just yeah. like, I mean, think about it, dude. Like, Nightcrawler's kind of a gross movie, but Brothers had some crazy shit. You probably go back and get a different view. Oh, <laughs> man. This is Kiwi, Kiwi, Kiwi. I don't think there's a week that goes by that I don't hear one of you. <laughs> no, I know. You memed it to death. So you're right. It's just, it's in my brain. I have to pick it because it's the one that I immediately thought of. It was like, song for the season. Ride your way. <laughs> Without a second thought, I'm like, listen, all those other ones are good to even great. And. Definitely better songs, but <laughs> this is the one that was immediately like print right onto the yeah, answer. You had to move it on. I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't unerase it from it. It so. was my original answer. It was going to be that one because I think like it encapsulates the movie perfectly too. Yeah, because again, it is played throughout the whole movie. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's yeah. I know you're doing it for a meme, but I still appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we'll uh, ride ride that wave into our next Stop. category. <laughs> I'm trying with these segues. Trying mm-hmm. here. Uh, go with best love story. Mm-hmm. And I'll start us off on a somber note. And I bet it will be. Mm-hmm. Was gonna go with ride your Pro-mare. wave. What? Oh. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah. yeah. But I'll, I would go with the bromance between uh, burning passion yeah, and white hair guy. Especially at the end. <laughs> yeah. Got yeah, really close on that one. Um, almost Darling in the Franks kind of style. Um, but I was going to go with that one because it really sticks in your mind and realistic. But man, if there's a love story that's going to stick in my mind way more out of any movie this season, it's going to be... I'm, I'm kind of extrapolating love story to be like the story of love and going definitely with Dear Zachary uh, with the grandparents. Uh, nothing's really going to stick with me as much as like that last like that last scene where it talks like about the grandparents, how like they are actually the through line of this entire movie or a documentary rather, and how they're the ones like this is really about and for uh, really got me because you're like wow like you do actually see how they like have so much love to give to all of these people, uh, including their own kids. So yeah, definitely the the grandparents for me. Um, I'm gonna go with ride your wave um and the reason i'm picking that is because i felt like it did something different with a love story that you don't often see that i think is a worthwhile subject to discuss which is like dealing with the death 
of like just your partner basically mm -hmm. um i also do have one slight correction it, the movie uh the matrix the oh. at the end it's wake up it's not mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right well yeah get off of our junk <laughs> yeah i just i you know, I saw maybe, the comments maybe already. Maybe one so. person. Would some guy, have that yeah, some guy's like unclenching his fists right now. This yeah. fool, yeah. he doesn't know what's our. Son. The guy who's asking to be our friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't want to be their friend anymore. <laughs> Unfriended. <laughs> they don't know their matrix score trivia off the top of their heads. Dylan, what you what you got next? You don't get to go last again. Um, uh, you guys are gonna hate it. Mason's gonna love it. I'm picking this kind of a funny story. Mm. And okay. who? Yeah. The well, love story between the main guy and the girl. Yep. What? It, it right. ties no. up very nicely. What? what? Both of you guys are wrong. No. Ooh. The story between Craig and Zach Galifianakis. Oh. Oh. No, it's definitely the, obviously him and him wrong. That's what I said. At the end, they do tie it up really yeah. nicely. Yeah, they, they tie it up. They bring them together with it. And you know what? Call me a sucker for, like, again, it's that, that teen drama stuff that I, I do love that it's just that cringy, awkward, genuine stuff. But it's, it's one of the things for me that translates in genuine nature. And, like, Roger Ray was definitely a runner-up if they followed through with the concept of all right, maybe it's all in her head. For me, that was that would have meant more with it, but mm -hmm. him being mystical and magical kind of took me out of it. And again, I was looking for genuine when I think of love. And yeah, say what that, you will, that, it is... We all yelled about that it, quite it, a that, lot. That cuts it pretty hard. Yeah. I think it was a good idea, but that... If they had stuff. followed through with that idea instead of doing what they did, I would have definitely picked Roger Wave because I think it would have been a more meaningful Honestly, movie. if they just cut out that, like, second third of the movie and just, like took all that out and just put the ending on where, like, you know, she has the dinner with her friends, like, mm -hmm. a year later, that would have been great. Yeah, but... ambiguous stuff thing throughout the time. Yeah. But they didn't do that. But you know what? Yep. It's kind of funny story to do. It was a genuine teen get-together in, in a mental health ward. And I was just... <laughs> I just didn't yeah. feel like he deserved her in any way, shape, or form. Well, like, I was, was more angry at the fact that, yeah. like, she would even give him the light of day when he was such an asshat the whole time. Well, he had his I eyes on about it. that. You're so, right. Yeah, he yeah. was an asshole to her the whole time, and she's just like, like, I'm trying to like reach out to you, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna make out with this beautiful chick in front of you, and like, I'm gonna be cryptic and mysterious, like, teenage get over stupid yourself. dog. Like, yeah. you're, you're expecting a lot out of a teen. Yeah, I'm you're, not gonna blame all of your me. passwords were Inception back when you were a kid, and you <laughs> you didn't like that about yourself. Yeah, so. now well, it's Inception wasn't... exclamation point <laughs> <laughs> with a capital I. Yeah. Um. Nope. I'm going to head back to Dylan. <laughs> um, my pick is going to be It Follows. I think that uh, yeah. Paul... Dude, Paul, that kid crushed it for both Paul's of us. Paul's love for whoever the hell her He's name just was. a cock. Yeah, he, he is. He is the definition of a cock. And who's that not to guy, say that that isn't beautiful? <laughs> that guy was witnessing people dying We're around not him. Not Jamie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because they slept with this girl and he was still had his sights on her. Yeah. The entire Again, time. Again, cock. Yeah, it's uh, just like don't care had sex. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a it was a pursuit for sure, and not only was he able to achieve it, but at the same time, I think he actually had feelings for her. And yeah, you can say what you want to. I didn't like that segment at all. I, I hated that answer. <laughs> this season was not big on love stories. I don't think. No, really. God, well. you're uh, insane. <laughs> Anyway, don't want to yell I should have said Craig and Mia, honestly. That would Craig be and Mia. <laughs> right before we... Uh, the last uh, little one we have to discuss before the two big heavy hitters, uh, we've got uh, best character. So do you all want to go with more like best best character or favorite character? Mm -hmm. Mine's... I think we're all going to be subjective. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be subjective, all right. but I think mine tends to lean on both. I'm gonna it's going to be blank it. character. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Honorable <laughs> mentions. Honorable big mentions to... The snake and the fox from um, Little Prince. Because I, I like the deep little symbolic things wow, that they present yeah. as characters with that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that them as mm. a character both in a tool, I, I, I really like those concepts. Honorable mentions. That being said, sorry guys, we watched Jurassic Park this season, so another one has to come in. <laughs> no! Yeah, no! Get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? As good as, like, I find the rest of the cast on this one and they're all grand. Like, Ian Malcolm is just this magical, wonderful glue that just it takes the movie up a little bit more. Every single time he's in the scene, it's just something extra and entertaining. And, like, I'm convinced it's just uh, Jeff Goldblum now that I've seen him in I mean, stuff. it set up his <laughs> acting career for the next 30 years. Right, yeah. but knowing that... Like, just, that's, honestly, just Jeff Goldblum is even more eccentric than even Ian Malcolm. It's him watered down in the movie. I'm just like, I just love that. I love all of that. Jeff Goldblum is so enticing as a person. And I was like, there are so many great characters to pick from in this season. Like, I, I don't, 
Don't get me wrong. Uh, your guys' picks are gonna be great because I know it's not Ian Malcolm, but fucking, <laughs> it's not. He, him, uh, I, just, I like it. I like it though. I just I love watched it, Grand though. Budapest last night, and he's in that movie. Dude, like, Goldblum <laughs> twenty years later. Dude, he's so good. He's so good. Ian Malcolm had to be mine. Had to be. Uh, I'll go. Uh, honorable mentions to Jeff Goldblum. Jake Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler, which I'm uh-huh. sure will get picked, and that's awesome. Also, <laughs> Tony Collette and Hereditary was Oof. insanely Some. good, mm. but my pick or overall no, no. is yeah. going to be Kronk. Kronk <laughs> season was my favorite, <laughs> bar none. You all had a really fun time talking about him yes. during that Kronk, uh, like, discussion. I don't think Emperor or anything was going to come out after this movie if it wasn't for Kronk. Mm. David Spade's performance, I say performance, it was animated. His, his voicing was meh. Uh, I think Yzma oh, was a was a pretty okay villain. I'm not saying that you know sh- she lacked anything, but Kronk's performance in that movie was spectacular, mm-hmm. and I don't see how on earth. I was what? gonna say I, I'm glad that Kronk's new group right was that the thing mm-hmm. yeah that deserved. I mean I forgot his name. Uh, Patrick Warburton uh, does Kronk, and yeah. he is like the like one of the most prolific voice actors yeah, like he's working in everything today. Now. He does a yeah, lot. He, he of does a work. great job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a really good distinct voice, and he does a good job of like acting when he does his voice roles. Right. So all I remember yeah. is rules of engagement. That's the only thing I know him in, like physically with David Spade. Uh, I know he I mean, did a lot of voice David, acting huh? for the Skylanders video games. <laughs> Family Guy. He's um, uh, Joe. Uh, the Joe, guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the wheelchair. wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's honestly for the, for me, this one was probably the easiest category to pick. It's obviously uh, Nightcrawler, Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal. I mean, it's... I was thinking Promare, yeah. <laughs> it's the burning, 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 yeah, yeah. burning passion. Ah! <laughs> no, uh, he just stole the show for me. I mean, the whole movie is like like a character study of him and how he fits into the larger narrative of like this really seedy underground business. And his performance is just absolutely phenomenal. To watch, like he fully gets into this character's skin and just acts like him the whole time. Like every like time he talks, like all of his mannerisms, like he gets like deathly thin for this role. Like his cheekbones are insane. Like it looks like they could pierce you if he just like barely scraped past you. And he just like his looks, like it's just everything about his acting for it was absolutely amazing. And just watching him perform on screen for that long was really fun. So Nightcrawler. Well. This is not of the same caliber, but <laughs> I... I love these. I'm going to go with the Deacon from Waterworld. Yeah! <laughs> I was like, it's going to be something Waterworld. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. He was such, like, as villains go, such an entertaining villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Kronk was my villain pick, <laughs> but, I mean, those those two could have easily traded places. If they, they really could have. Yeah. <laughs> And I also just find it funny that he also is later playing our truck driver mm-hmm. in the yeah. space truck. Version. So we got him twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah, Both from Nathan. <laughs> mm. Must like his work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. We're getting to the... We're, we're wrapping up here. We're getting to our Best Picture uh, nominees Whoa. here. So we're going to go with Favorite Movie. It could be... Uh, you'll go Favorite Movie you didn't pick first or... Didn't pick favorite, first. F- okay. Favorite Movie you didn't pick. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll lead the way on this one. Uh, it's really hard for me to fight for any other movie uh, that's not Jurassic Park. Chromare! <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be I picked that movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Jurassic Park is a classic. I've loved it ever since I watched it when I was little. I could watch it anytime. It's a little bit lengthy still. Uh, it still could be trimmed up just a little bit. But, man, uh, it's just a delight to watch. Uh, I love the practical effects. Uh, the characters are enjoyable to watch. They're one note, which is kind of uh, annoying, but they fit the bill for what the, the movie's looking for. And the action pieces are great. Uh, the suspense is there. It's just fun from top to bottom. I'm going to go with The Matrix. Uh, the Matrix is, if if we're talking, which we've had this discussion, Jurassic Park is iconic. The Matrix is iconic. Both are from the same decade. I don't think that either one of them are necessarily better than the other one, but The Matrix leaves a little bit more of a deep thought process in its wake, and I just love everything The Matrix has. Um, 
even to this day, which, again, they're both, as far as franchises, they're still making movies about both of them, mm-hmm. which is wild to think about from the early to mid-90s. Um, yeah, they, they're actually making another Matrix. Matrix, Matrix it's soon. supposed to come out in December. Uh, Allegedly. So, uh, yeah, I was going to say, it got pushed. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that The Matrix is, is very deserving of that for me. Mm. I'm going to take your torch and say, I'm going to go with The Matrix as my movie that I didn't pick with that one. Uh, you know, the fact that it has franchises coming out all the way 20 years later, and I was just going to repeat exactly everything that you <laughs> said. Because, uh, yeah. yeah. He took my pick. But yeah, Matrix is good. Keanu Reeves. Great soundtrack. Dragula. Dragula. <laughs> and Rage. Ah. Yeah. Um, okay, so my choice is going to be Nightcrawler. Nice. Because we finally watched it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been waiting for somebody to finally pick that movie for so long. It was dropped and then pulled out from under me, so it's good to finally get to... Years. Let <laughs> review it. <laughs> Man, who would have thought that like season three would bring us Nathan not getting one worst picture nod, yeah, mm-hmm. not one, and then you got two best picture nods. Yeah, yeah. that's that's insane to me. Sorry, that's... I had to note that before we get into the next. And that one. was his first pick mm-hmm. of this season. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll get to the, the magnum opus, the last one, the hot tamale. Uh, favorite movie. So favorite movie overall. Uh, it's probably gonna be one that you pick, but also could be one somebody else picked. So, who wants to, to lead the charge on that one? I mean, oh. I'll, I'll go. Because go ahead. I'm not going to surprise anybody. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> It's Jurassic Park. <laughs> I, you, it was a 10. It's a 10. Perfect movie. Yeah. The end. Go watch our review. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm going to go, and probably not get yelled at, I'm going to go with The Social Network. Uh, I think I gave that movie a 9.5. It's... Oh, it is... Good movie. It is a wild thing. Just the entire thing that, that comes from it... I've said a million times, I fought for it in the bracket for a couple rounds. It's it's about a piece that shouldn't be exciting, and they are able to bring in a really, really good cast. Yes, Justin Timberlake. You know, yes, Jesse Eisenberg. But Don't forget Brenda Song. Oh, yeah, Brenda Song <laughs> yeah. is the Asian crazy girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, she touches Dong. Yeah, she does. <laughs> but all, all of the people that come into this movie cast-wise give it 120%, I feel like. Even Justin Timberlake, which I think is a pretty okay actor. I think everyone, and it, it was a group effort, too, mm-hmm. so it, it wouldn't have been where it is if, if any of them hadn't acted very well. Yeah. Um, so I've got... <laughs> this is the wheel. Yeah. If you I've got spoil. written down <laughs> Space Trucker. Yes. Hell yeah. Ah. I was going to say, if you <laughs> don't pick the Matrix, I'm, I'm going to be very surprised. Like, should it be the Matrix? Yes. yes. But if I'm but. looking at the movies that were watched this season, and which one I'm, like, the happiest that I <laughs> watched for the first time, basically. Yeah, it'd be like Willy's Wonderland. Like, mm-hmm. I, I was so surprised by that movie. Yeah. Like, it was a blind pick. Um, it was a complete accident that we even realized that this movie existed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because I like we had had this joke in a D and D group where we were going to make a space themed like ice road truckers, but in space kind of thing. <laughs> and the joke got misinterpreted by a friend of ours who thought that we were actually referencing a movie or something. And he found this movie, watched it, and was like, oh, that makes sense. That's the <laughs> kind of movie that Nathan would like. That's true. And then he finally mentions that to me. I was like, oh, I've never seen that before. I have to watch uh, it. Yeah. All of us watch it, yeah. too. You created and a... it was so worth it. I mean, they're square pigs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Square pigs. Yeah, Deacon's in it. I mean, what's not to love? You got the Deacon. You got Tywin the Cyborg. Yeah. yeah. And that's... his most notable part, Roll. <laughs> yeah. With the chainsaw dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I ever got to interview that man for whatever reason in my you life, have to that. You I mean, like, so we mentioned Game of Thrones. We have to talk yeah. about your <laughs> prolific role in Space Trucker. You sure you don't want to talk about me as Tywin Lannister or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. What else were you in? I didn't watch Lord of the Rings, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, oh, I love that. Like, I'll talk about anything in the Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah he's probably sick of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I guess I'm the last one here. Uh, I genuinely, after I watched it, I was wanting to pick Ride Your Wave so bad. But, 
man, did that ending let me down in the <laughs> biggest way possible. Yeah. Um, again, going through a watch, I was wanting to give that movie a 10. I really was. And then the ending dropped the ball so hard, uh, dropped a tidal wave on it, so to speak. And every wave crashes and, to the shore. Man. And every wave crashes to the shore and kills all the civilians <laughs> yeah. in the immediate area. Whoa, that's a little too Japan. Uh, okay. Sorry, the weather with you did it, and they can do it too. Uh, but... Um, Sorry to sound like a broken record here and go with pro I mean, Nightcrawler. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. I'm glad no, you made the joke. I'm, yeah, that yeah. I'm definitely going with Nightcrawler. Uh, I really like this movie. I really hope it does well in the bracket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. <laughs> I oh just think, God. like, like Mesa saying, like, an ensemble cast is what he was looking for in the social network to bring it up. You, I'm really looking for that tour de force of Jake Gyllenhaal carrying up the movie and all of the surrounding cast just making it easier for him to do so. Uh, and they're just allowed, facilitating him to, to carry it. And the, I really like movies when they do, like when they look at like real problems and stuff, but like things I've never thought of. Um, that's hopefully going to be carrying into a movie I'm going to pick later. Uh, but I'll... I just love it. Like, I never thought about this problem before. It's brought to the forefront, and it just does it in such a masterful way. It's not too long. Uh, it's beautiful to watch. It's got, it's just dark and, like, seedy through the whole movie, and it's just super fun to watch. So, yeah, I'm going with Nightcrawler. Mm. Very nice. So, as, as we wrap all this up, what did you all think about this season as a whole of Ooh, season uh, three? So, this was the season where we just did away with our one standing rule <laughs> of at least two of us have to have not, not seen, seen the it. movie yeah. beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hence We're, Jurassic Park. Yeah. Well, Coming through yeah, and taking yeah, away everything. Yeah. Yeah. Jurassic Park, The Matrix, like <laughs> a lot of just yeah. big iconic <laughs> movies got to be seen yeah. this cycle because of that. Yeah. Blockbuster season. Yeah. Well, uh, the 90s well, blockbuster season anyway. <laughs> like, I don't know if I would call this a blockbuster season. We were still just picking oddball things. Out oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's pretty much just The Matrix Mandy. and uh, Jurassic Park. Like, I think those are the only things I would consider blockbuster in our whole world. Yeah. Not even Nightcrawler is technically that. Like, it's But, drama. you know, overall, I'd say it was pretty solid. Um, even if some of these categories, I was like, I don't really know if there was anything in here for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, I know Mason came in beforehand, and he was saying that Prices was, like, opinion of, of this awards picking thing that he was just like oh it was right for the picking he was like there were so many great options but mason was like yeah i didn't feel too super hot and, and i'm kind of with mason on this while i i enjoyed the like movie quality it definitely felt like a big step up from season two for us <laughs> it like for the award segment stuff i was just like honestly i don't know i guess this and i was just I, and a couple of it came down to being cop outs because I, again i got to pick a 10 in my season so <laughs> anytime a 10 goes into the season pile like it just feels like it's cleaning up awards options for like the later stuff on that yeah. Um, I'm not gonna feel bad about it because fucking Jurassic Park slaps. But yeah, there, I would say that there's a little bit of polarization in, in some of the awards stuff. But otherwise, other than this end up wrap up thing, I thought that this season overall was pretty good movie wise. I never felt like it was like I was screaming at the screen for like a month straight. <laughs> like I never felt like it was like pulling a very long band aid. I was like maybe we've gotten through some of those bad ones and we our expectations are all grounded and level now for I mean, all of us. Yeah. Yeah. You think of like Mandy even you know like Mandy was even a. a an interesting right, kind of like crazy. I, I like, still had a ride with yeah. like Mandy. Like yeah, even if we they're were forgetting all... about Birdemic. Well, some of us. <laughs> Let's are. hope they forget. Some of us are. That's by design. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think as far as this season goes, it'll be exciting to see what we do next season. So mm -hmm. that's our transition. Yeah. Yeah. Almost because I have something to say as well. So the first season I think is going to be hard to top like ever because we we watched the most movies for that one because we haven't really figured out like how we're going to structure this mm -hmm. and we picked like some of the top movies that we still talk about to this day like Your Name, um, Warrior, Warrior, like just a lot prisoners. of like prisoners, prisoners of course, yeah. and season two is pro probably going to be our lowest point probably throughout this whole thing. Uh, we oh, just did. I don't know. You can always go deep. Never say never. You definitely say. can, but man, those themes that we did just <laughs> ran it into the ground. Notoriously, the one where like we picked for each other, like I thought that was going to be such a great idea because like you get to pick something. It wasn't. From, you get to pick, so bad. You get to pick something from your catalog that like you think somebody else would like, but some of us just didn't well, know how that yes, worked at so all, like Good Will Hunting, or Brokeback Mountain, or, or Dylan, mountain. or <laughs> something Dylan. else that Dylan picked. I'm sure I won that month with Good Will Hunting, but... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no,
Um, but yeah, as far as that Inch goes... Insure a mile, buddy. I won the race. <laughs> you know, moving forward, we do have some new ideas. Yeah. Um, a little bit more yep. guest speaker action probably in the mix. A few more yeah. kind of branching off of what we do here. Uh-huh. Adding maybe some new mechanics, maybe some, getting uh, some, uh, some format changes. Yeah, just well, experimentally, just yeah, to see. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're probably gonna have what we call is what like a trial period season, not necessarily like a whole season of it, but you know, definitely maybe three, four, week, maybe month, maybe more, maybe less, uh, period where we're just kind of try some new things as far as visual stuff, seeing if we can get more a little bit more stimulating, maybe try to mess around with our formats and segments and stuff. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers, but you know, I think we can all agree it's gonna be a, a ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's right. going to be all right. That's the biggest hint I'll give you. <laughs> this is an announcement of an announcement. But, but I mean, dude, we, we also need to lead into our next big uh, uh, series of uh, videos that we have coming out, yeah. correct? Yeah. The yeah. big boy. A lot. The big the big a- About bang. six hours <laughs> of conversation. Bracket! <laughs> the big bracket. Yeah. We, we've teased it in mm-hmm. our last movie review uh-huh. before this uh-huh. went up um and yeah it's 64 <laughs> yeah it is. <laughs> we, we we talked about i think 102 or 104 movies we had to cut that something down. like that we cut that down to the top 64. 64 uh and then we talked through everything with one movie coming out victorious and and i won't yeah, lie to you man. my favorite part is how incredibly wrong price was on the timeline he said and i quote <laughs> you don't think this will be more than two hours do you me nathan yeah. and mason yes <laughs> And we that, tripled that. <laughs> that. That to me is the most spectacular thing about this, is how there was such an expectation going into this of like, oh, we'll just knock this thing out. No, no, no. no. He like, was like, yeah, we're still going to do yeah. this whole segment <laughs> after, too. Yeah. Well, I unfortunately thought that reason would prevail. It did. It did Up not. until the finals, and then we'll see. But oh, yeah. The finals is, yeah. But well, I don't want to spoil it. We don't want to spoil, spoil it. Spoil it. You, gotta, you, you need but to man, watch it. It just, is. Get you some popcorn. Get you a big old cup of Coca Cola. You're gonna need more than snacks. Go ahead and make your dinner. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> dinner. You put need... it on. It's, this is a this is a gauntlet. Run you a bubble bath. Get the candles going. You're gonna be a shriveled raisin if you go into the bubble bath <laughs> early on. Wrap. Last video maybe go into the bubble yeah. bath. L- but, luckily, yeah. we're gonna be breaking this up into multiple segments. Yes, I have to. Yes, so much. Because yeah, this... I don't feel like uploading a six hour long. Ooh, it's a thick boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's fun. But after that, we're going to be going, uh, as uh, Dylan said earlier, we're going to be trying some more kind of experimental kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, try some format stuff out. It's going to look a lot different around here. We're going to give you all more of a reason to actually watch us uh, rather than just listen to us. And hopefully, uh, you know, maybe we'll get uh, five or ten more subs out of that, you know? No. Maybe we'll be Ooh. able to afford a piece of bubble gum. Nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah, well, no, no, no. We, we always reinvest everything that we make into a new set. <laughs> That's or, true. you know... The, it all goes back into the. That's what paid for this house, like, right? Like, we wouldn't spend, yeah. We wouldn't waste money on bubble gum. No, <laughs> it's all about improving quality. Yeah, Always. it's it's strange how we only have a budget for our sets, and that's it. Like <laughs> that's it. How yeah. we just change it every single season, or even in the in between seasons at times. So, anyway, uh, I hope you continue to support the channel, and making sure to watch and entertain. If you enjoy all the content we continue to keep putting out, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you haven't sub subscribed to it. Let us know in the comments why you haven't subbed. What are, what do we got to do for your <laughs> sub? <laughs> we will sell out so fast. We'll name drop you. You don't even we don't even have a Patreon. You don't have to pay a yeah. dollar or ten. If you go in the comments right now, we'll say, you know what, Jeff, I agree. I am a dumbass. Thank you for making sure to hit us in the comments below. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you have a movie uh, suggestion that we can watch below. That'd be great. Hey, Come. you know why not? Yeah. I, I, I'm shooting just out into the void with a few of my picks. So As usual. Might might be good to have some more options Help us. available yeah. to us. Help Nathan. Please quit letting him pick movies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get did. any of the bad calls That's this true. Time. You true. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> no. It was he you. He did too. <laughs> it was all you this time. Nah. <laughs> Except for one. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Anyway, guys, that's our, uh, that's our whole show. Price wanted to host that one, but I took it at the end. Because he just left it on the plate. I did. Just leftovers. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) Have a good hit the bell. It would be (laughs) insane to see how many times, like Jurassic Park, Matrix, and Promare got pulled up just Uh, in this season. Like in that.